Hi, my name is Adrienne Hendricks and I'm a professional saddle maker here in Eagle, Idaho. I am so excited to be the official saddle fitter for this year's Tevis and I wanted to share some techniques that I use for saddle fitting that I thought you might find useful whether you're riding the Tevis or you're doing the virtual Tevis 100. So what I like to do when I start off saddle fitting is I go up and I just introduce myself to the horse and I'm going to start at their head and just pet them a little bit firmer than I normally would because what I want to do is feel for any firm areas or sore areas or areas of extreme softness to just see are there some tender places on their neck under the saddle or in their haunch area what that's going to tell me is if the saddle's too narrow or if there's some fitting issues they might be flexing in their neck and their hindquarters or bracing against the saddle if there's some discomfort in their back kind of like you would if the arch of your shoe hurts so I'm gonna feel their body and see if I feel any soreness or lumps. The soreness could also be indicative of perhaps pressure in their loin area or even white hairs might show me some previous injuries. So I'm just gonna feel their body, give them a visual inspection. Then I'm gonna move on to taking tracings. And when I take tracings, all I use is a flexi curve, which is an architectural ruler. You can get it at Staples Home, not Home Depot, but Staples Office Max. I also get a spirit level, which helps me. This is an educated guess. It is not an exact science, but the spirit level helps me to the best that I can line up each tracing. And this little wood part is important because each time I line up my, my flexi curve, I line it up with the little holes or the little dots that I draw through each of these holes. And if you send me a flexi curve and a spirit level, I could probably get my dad to make you one of these uh, wooden pieces as well. Uh, so what I do is I take a blank folder and I start by laying my flexi curve down and I mark the two holes right there. So each time I do a tracing, I can line up my flexi curve. Now, the first tracing I'm gonna do is gonna be, we're gonna pretend this is our horse and here's the head and here's the tail. The first tracing is gonna be three fingers behind their scapula, where the points of the tree or the bars of the saddle are gonna sit. And I'm gonna press down firmly on each side. I'm gonna make sure my flexi curve is lined up the bubbles in the middle. I also, the hardest part of this is keeping the right tracings on the right side of the horse and the left on the left. So what I do is I always keep the bubbles facing towards their tail. So I'm gonna press it down on their withers, press firmly, take it off, and then I'm gonna line up my dots on my folder and trace my first tracing. Then I'm gonna do my second tracing at the lowest point at the base of their withers where the rider's center of mass is. And the last tracing is gonna be at my best guess where their T18 is. And what I do is I'm gonna feel up their flank, kind of that soft area along their ribs, feel for the last rib and then work my way up. I'm not a body worker and I'm sure there are some body workers out there or chiropractors that could help you be much more accurate, but that's kind of how I do it. So do your best on finding their T18. Essentially what I'm trying to do is get six reference points so I can see before I look at any saddle, is their back even? I also want to note that what I'm trying to help share will apply whether it's English, Western, it, it's not discipline specific. This is just general saddle fit of your horse that you can do at home, um, especially because a lot of us, I know in Idaho, we don't have a lot of saddle fitters here. So if you find yourself without somebody, these are just some things you can do at home, absolutely. Okay, so I've got my tracings, I've got them all written on my folder, and I put the name of the horse and I put the date and I pick a certain color, because down the road I'll explain what I do with different colors. And here's my first tracing. I measure down two, three, and four inches because I wanna see a trend of what's happening on their back and are they even. So when you think about it, you're riding on that long muscle that runs up and down their back. And I'm gonna see this any discrepancies as a short-term fix. If I start going to the gym, I'm gonna start looking a little different in a month or two. That's what I'm gonna see here if your saddle is sitting uneven on your horse's back. So this horse, on our first tracing, here's the right side, here's the left side. So it's just like I'm sitting on the horse. It's kind of how it helps me keep track of it. He measures six and a quarter centimeters five and three quarters, eight and a half, seven and a half, ten and three quarters, 
nine and three quarters. So he's about a centimeter smaller on that left front of where we measured. The second measure, the lowest point at the base of the withers where the rider's sitting, he measures eight centimeters, seven and a quarter, 11 and a quarter, 10, 14 and a half, 13 and a half. So again, about a centimeter smaller on that left side under where the rider's sitting and where the rider's leg hangs. And the saddle may not come into contact there, but if your horse, you know, is two centimeters is about an inch. If your leg is about an inch further out, it's gonna affect how you sit in the saddle and a horse can feel a fly, I can feel a pebble in my shoe. If my backpack is sitting off to the side, it's gonna affect the way I move. If, especially, you know, we're not a fly, uh, we're not a feather in the saddle up there, I know we try, but there's still, you know, my 150 pounds up there posting and doing whatever I need to. It's gonna affect how that saddle is sitting on my horse and if it's sitting to one side or the other. So again, it may not be where the saddle is, but this is where the rider's leg is and that can impact how your saddle's sitting or how you're sitting in the you know what I mean. The last measurement I do is my best guess at where the T18 is. And this horse is 11 and a quarter and 10. So he's about one and a quarter centimeters smaller in the back left. So all along the left side, this horse is smaller to the left. And what was interesting is you could actually see the saddle sitting to the left. Now, one thing that can happen is just because he's smaller to the left doesn't mean the saddle will necessarily sit down to the left because saddles have a gullet in the middle, that empty space. So what can also happen is the saddle can self-center to the wider part. So you've got kind of a 50-50 chance on how is your saddle sitting on the horse. Another thing that can happen with the tracings is they can be smaller in the front and smaller in the back on the opposite side, so you can get some wobbling. And it's really interesting once you start measuring how you can see some different trends happen with how your saddle's sitting on the horse. Now, what I also like to do is over time, I mentioned using a different color. This is a horse that I've been measuring for quite a while, since 2017. And what you can see is how she's really changed from one year to the next. And it's just interesting to note, you know, is what I'm doing making a difference? What's happened? My horse was injured. You know, how much muscle tone have they lost? How has it changed? How's my saddle sitting on them? So I find it really fascinating to be able to track all of that over time. Once I find out where my horse's back is even or uneven, then I'm gonna artificially make their back even. And I'm gonna do that using either, I love hand towels, or I also get yoga mats and cut up because I like using just small layers that I can build up depending on how how much I need to compromise or how much I need to inflate their back to make it even. A lot of times, you know, saddle pads, you can put it in your saddle pad, you can just put it under the saddle. These yoga mats are great because they'll stay in place, but you want something that's got some body. Um, and again, you can also fold your washcloths. I love washcloths. You can fold them quite a few different ways so you're building a ramp and you're not just making a solid um, fold of material that'll mark their back. So that was a whole bunch of, once I find out if their back's even or not, I'm gonna place some shims strategically to artificially make their back even. Then I'm gonna look at how the saddle fits them. And the first thing I do when I have a saddle is I'm gonna check the treat. And all I do is put it in my rib cage and pull. And you'd be surprised about one out of every 10 saddles I pick up goes and that tells me there's a tree issue. So this one seems fine. So we're gonna continue on. The next thing I'm gonna do with the saddle is I'm actually gonna set it on my feet, but because you can't see that, I wanna show you, I'm gonna look up and down the saddle to see if it's even. And as I rock it, it's kind of hard to do with these cameras. See how it's a little bit bigger on that side? And as I move it down, I'm just looking along here to see is the saddle even and see how it's a little bit bigger in the back there. And then I'm gonna flip it around and look at it from the other direction. And here we can really see how this back left side is quite a bit bigger. And then as I rotate it forward, it's still a little bigger through here. And then as it gets up to me, see how it's smaller here, 
than it is here. And I know this is hard because I'm wobbling and we're trying to do it through the camera, but try it at home with your saddles because it's really interesting to start looking at saddles. And again, whether it's English or Western, you want, my personal philosophy is I want the horses back even and I want the saddles symmetrical. And there's a lot of other ways we can make saddles symmetrical. We can talk about that later, but I just want you to be aware, is your saddle symmetrical when we're setting it on the horse? So now we're gonna put the saddle on the horse. And what I really wanna note is when I set it on, is the horse happy or is the horse grumpy and kind of biting me like something hurts? That can a lot of times be indicative of saddle fit issues. So I put my saddle on, my horse was happy. So we're good to continue. What I wanna check next is the width. I want to have about two to three fingers for an English saddle or four to five fingers width between their withers and the pommel of the saddle when I set it on them. This saddle is a little too narrow for my horse. I've got five full fingers of room, so I'd like it to sit down a little lower. Sometimes what can happen is it can be deceiving if your saddle is sitting there and I want the tree to be parallel with the horse's shoulder, but a lot of times it's parallel, but it's up here and I've got like five or six fingers gap. That's kind of what we call a party hat on a beach ball. Your saddle is way too narrow for your horse. You do want it parallel, but I want it sitting down to really register behind their scapula and stay in place. Quite often I hear that saddles slide forward. A lot of times it's indicative because the saddle's too narrow. So back to what I was talking about on the party hat on the beach ball, I wanna check, is the bar or the tree of the saddle parallel with the horse's scapula? And is it sitting down so it's nice and engaged behind their scapula? So I'm gonna see, yep, okay, it's a little narrow, but for what we're doing, we're gonna run with it. The next thing I wanna check is I'm gonna take my hand closest to their head and I wanna run my hand between their body, their scapula, and the saddle to see, does it feel even or is there a tight place and is there a loose place? Uh, quite often, there can be no contact down under this part of the saddle. Depending on what the issue is, it might be something that can be adjusted or changed, or it, you know, it might be something important, it might not be, but that's something, um, at least you have an awareness. Ideally, I want it just nice and even down the front of the saddle. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand, the hand closest to their tail, I'm gonna run under as much of the panel as I can fit my hand under. And I'm gonna put my hand palm side down and it's gonna be really awkward and look really bad, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. I'm gonna run my hand as far up, and my hand's up to about there, under the saddle, and I'm gonna stabilize it by holding the pommel or the forks with my other hand. And as I run my hand along there, I actually close my eyes because then I can kind of think about it more, and I think tight, loose, tight, loose, tight, loose. I wanna see where is it tight and where is it loose. I also wanna pay attention, is it tight on this part of my hand? Is it tight on my knuckles? Or is it even on the whole part of my hand? Because you'd be amazed, you can feel different pressures depending on the angles of your panels or bars. So what's happening under here? And this is where it gets really exciting because how do the tight and loose areas correspond to the sweat marks that you're getting? If you feel a big loose area here, and there's a big dry patch that could tell us there's no contact or if there's a dry patch and there's a really tight area that's going to tell us it's too tight so this is how i like to kind of correlate what i'm feeling with what i'm seeing on how the saddle feels and how my horse is moving in the sweat marks so once we do that we've identified tight and loose spots where it feels good where it may not feel that great then I'm gonna take one hand and put on the pommel and one hand and put on the cantle, and I'm gonna push back and forth and see if I feel a wobble. And what I do is I push back and forth and then I push in a little figure eight because I wanna see how much wobble is in the saddle. And this is where the tracings that I took earlier are gonna come into play. What I would do now is look at my tracings and figure out, okay, on this horse we looked at, we needed to put shims on the whole left side. So I'm gonna get out my hand towel and I'm gonna fold it about, actually I'm gonna fold it in thirds. I'm gonna fold my hand towel and place it between the saddle and the horse's back on the left side. 
and really support and lift the saddle up. And then I'm gonna put my hands and see how does it feel? And is it still sitting off to the left or did that, did that stop the wobble? And it's amazing, usually if it's a centimeter or more, I'm gonna look at shimming. And even though it measures a centimeter, again, this is not exact science, this is educated guess, I'm just gonna use this thin little yoga mat because just a little bit can make a big difference. So depending on where your horse is small, add some shims, see how the wobble of your saddle feels. I'm also gonna remember, okay, one of the backsides was a little bit big, um, but again, that's an issue for a saddle maker or someone else to really go and to adjust your saddle. I wouldn't suggest that for right now, but I want you to just have these things in your mind as you're going through, does my saddle feel secure and is it sitting evenly on my horse? If not, why? Is it a saddle issue or the horse issue? And what can I do? How can I address that? So once we feel that, we're gonna do the shims, then I'm gonna put the saddle pad on and do the whole process again. So let's feel the saddle with the saddle pad. Are the tight and the loose places the same as without a saddle pad? Because ideally, for English saddles, we want the saddle to fit without a pad. Western, we do need that pad, so we're gonna be adding that. But it's really interesting how the fit can change as you start to add padding. And if you're adding thick padding, it can really change the way your saddle's fitting. Uh, it might increase the bad things or it might increase the good things that you wanna feel. So it's one of those things, add a saddle pad, put your shims in, and then when you go to fit or feel it, you're gonna put your hand between the saddle pad and your, yeah, the saddle pad and your horse's skin. You're not gonna put it between the saddle and the saddle pad. So feel fur as you start to feel, and then you're gonna reach under the saddle pads again to feel up under the panel and see what's changing. And I know this may seem like a lot, but the more you start doing it, the easier it gets. Some great ways to practice is do it with one saddle, then put a different saddle on your horse, and then a different saddle. And if you really wanna get crazy, get with some friends, and you guys can put your saddles on other horses and start to feel the same saddle on a different horse because it's really interesting how they fit so differently. Just like all of us have different conformations, so do our horses and our saddles have different feels as well. So I just think it's fascinating and it's just really exciting. So last thing I wanna suggest is once you address where might you wanna put some shims, how's your saddle fitting, where might there be some challenges, put it on and go for a ride. And let's look at your new sweat marks and see, did your shims make a difference? Where is your saddle sitting? Is it too low in front? Is it back? Were you able to lift it or modify that through your use of shims? Again, I love to look at saddle marks and you know, it's a great way to help see what's happening in your, in your fitting of your saddle. So to recap, we're gonna start by feeling the horse's body. Then we're gonna take tracings. Then we're gonna check the saddle to make sure the tree's not broken and make sure the saddle's even. We're gonna check the saddle on the horse. Put it on, how's the horse? Is he happy to go to work or is he kind of grumpy about having to go out and work? I'm gonna check the front of the saddle to see is it parallel with the horse's shoulder and I wanna see how high or low the saddle's sitting. How much room is there for me to put my hand in between his withers and the pommel of the saddle? The next thing I'm gonna do is feel under the front of the saddle is it nice and even or is there a tight spot or a gap where there's no contact? Then I'm gonna feel under the entirety of the panel from their head to the back of their tail. Where is it tight? Where is it loose? What am I feeling? Then I'm gonna put my hands on the top of the saddle and feel for the wobble. And then I'm gonna put my shims in to see if the placement of my shims from my tracing can help stabilize my saddle. The last thing I'm gonna do is put my saddle pads on do the whole process again, place my shims, check the fit, and then go ride and see what my sweat marks look like. So I'm excited to hear how this goes. I'm available if you have any questions, you can always find me on the Teva site. They've got some links to my website as well as englishsaddle.com. Again, englishsaddle.com. My name's Adrienne Hendricks. I'm happy, I love to talk about this stuff. So call me if you have questions. Um, again, I am thrilled to be a part of Tevis this year and I wish you all many fabulous miles. Thanks so much.